Hello, I'm presenting this paper for ICAS 2021. The title is Semi-Supervised Learning for Singing Synthesis Timbre. My name is Jordi Bunada. I co-author this paper with Marlene Blau from the Music Technology Group of the Universitat Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. First of all, a brief introduction. Recently, and thanks to modern deep learning techniques, great advances have been made in singing synthesis. However, training a singing synthesizer typically requires a dataset with annotations, for instance, with aligned notes and phonetic cementation, and this often involves manual corrections and becomes a bottleneck for creating new voices. We could think of several scenarios where this might be particularly relevant, for example, acquired synthesis or systems aiming at learning user voices. In this work, we propose a model for singing timbre that is trained in a semi-supervised manner. In the first step, we train only once a part of the model using an annotator multi speaker dataset. But the key point here is that later, we can train the model for new voices directly from audio data without any additional annotations. And finally, we can generate synthetic singing of these new voices out of F0 and linguistic control features. The system we propose is an autoencoder with a linguistic and an acoustic encoder. The decoder randomly selects the hidden representation of one of the encoders and produces the target acoustic features. Our system has two objectives. One is to reconstruct the target acoustic features, and the other is to favor encoders producing similar embeddings when fed with linguistic and acoustic data from the same performance. In our system, uh, we only train once the encoders using an annotated multi speaker dataset. Next, using the pre-trained acoustic encoder, we can unsupervisedly train a new voice just from audio without any annotations. In this process, we only train the weights of the decoder part. And then at synthesis, we can generate synthetic singing from input linguistic features and S0 by combining the pre-trained linguistic encoder and the decoder of the target voice. Both acoustic and linguistic encoders are non-causal wavenet architectures and use the same hyperparameters. They take as input male spectrogram and one hot encoded phonetic sequences and focus on rather short scale variations using a receptive field of about 300 milliseconds with the idea to capture variations which are close to a phoneme level. Then, and for favoring similar embeddings from both encoders, we randomly switch between them during training and also minimize the loss between both embeddings. We also add normal noise to the encoder output after the non-linearity, and we do so with the aim that the encoder should not encode details of the male spectrum and also to favor more stable embedding along phonemes. The decoder is a cascade of two subnets with wavenet architectures, where the first subnet, D1, is non-causal, has a receptive field of about two and a half seconds and aims at modeling timbre variations at such a scale. The second subnet, D2, is autoregressive, has a receptive field of 200 milliseconds and aims at producing a detailed timbre output. Both subnets, D1 and D2, are conditioned on F0 and the speaker embedding. The training phase, the loss function has two components, an embedding loss and a reconstruction loss. The embedding loss is the L2 distance between acoustic and linguistic embeddings, while the reconstruction loss is the L2 distance between ground truth and predicted acoustic features. When training our system, we perform data augmentation by randomly pitch shifting within a four semitones range the acoustic features which are fed to the acoustic encoder. This transformation is performed in a way that modifies the pitch of the signal while at the same time linearly scales the timbre and frequency. 
and since the corresponding acoustic and linguistic embeddings have to be similar, then this state augmentation helps to produce a more speaker and pitch independent embedding. For the experiment in this work, we use two proprietary datasets. For training the encoders, we use an annotated multi speaker dataset of seven native English singers and close to six hours with 10 songs per singer. The audio files here were phonetically segmented with manual corrections. Next, for training the decoders, we use a target dataset of 41 pop songs performed by a professional English male singer. This includes 41 pop songs, about 2 hours and 15 minutes, and its audio files were also annotated for allowing training a supervised uh, baseline system. Our proposed system uses 100-dimensional mass spectrum acoustic features, which are extracted with a 45 milliseconds window and a 5 milliseconds hop time, and compute between 10 and 15,200 hertz. Linguistic features are computed with one whole encodings using 43 phonetic symbols of the English language. Encoder and decoder networks share the same architecture with an input one by one convolution, then several layers, including dilated convolutions, gated units, and a residual connection. Then the skip connections are summed and fed to an output stack with the convolutional layers and leaky relu activations. The hyperparameters for each network are listed in the table and also the respective receptive fields. For training, uh, we use the ADEM optimizer and a batch size of 12 samples, with each sample producing a valid output length of one and a half seconds. We have evaluated our proposed semi supervised system by comparing it to a similar supervised model. The only difference between both systems is that the supervised model does not have an acoustic encoder, and so it learns to predict acoustic features from the input linguistic features using an annotated dataset of the target singer. Additionally, we also evaluate the voice cloning case, where we only use a small dataset of training data for the target voice of only three minutes. In this scenario, we first train both systems with the annotated multi-speaker dataset, and next, we fine-tune the model with the small dataset of the target voice. We run an MOS listening test with 12 participants that rated a random subset of 12 phrases out of 24. And for each of the tests, six stimuli were presented to the test subjects, including the different systems and also visible and hidden references. The shown examples uh, used in the test are available online. The result are shown in this table. We can see that the semi-supervised and the supervised systems perform similarly without a very significant difference. And both systems outperform the cloning approaches, probably due to the small amount of target data available for those. To conclude, in this work, we have proposed a semi-supervised method for learning a new voice timbre model from a singing data set without any annotation. According to our evaluation result, our proposed system performs similarly when compared to an equivalent supervised system using manually corrected annotations. Also, we show that our system performs acceptably in low resource scenarios where we only have access to a small amount of audio material. The results show that we can effectively reduce the effort to learn a new voice and this could be very useful in the context of choir singing, allowing to model many singers without the dataset annotation burden. And finally, some informal experiments show that our approach performs promisingly in voice conversion and cross-lingual synthesis scenarios. Thanks for your attention.